Now, the experimental observations we talked about were explained by Einstein by uh, inserting that basically we have electromagnetic waves of frequency f uh, is just a, con a collection of stream of quanta called photons. So they each have energy hf. So we have energy packets uh, called photons. These are a stream of quanta. The quantum of energy is hf. The speed of light is c, which is lambda times frequency, 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second. So what happens in the photoelectric effect? A photon of incident light gives all its energy HF to a single electron in the metal. So this is a one photon, one electron process. The absorption of energy is not a continuous process. It's a discrete process. We have one photon interacting with one electron and it happens one at a time. Now, during the absorption process, the energy of the electromagnetic radiation, which is equal to HF, uh, the energy carried by the photon, causes a change in the mechanical energy of the electron, delta K plus delta U. Now, the initial kinetic energy of the electron is zero. The initial potential of the uh, potential energy of the electron is minus phi, called the work function of the metal. So this is the minimum energy required to release an electron. So if we supply an energy phi, then the electron will be released with a final potential energy of zero. This has a value of the order of a few electron volts and the electron ga gains its maximum uh, kinetic energy in this process. So then the electron is released from the surface of the metal. So it becomes a photoelectron. All right, so we have initial potential energy minus phi. The final potential energy is zero. Initial kinetic energy is zero. Final kinetic energy is the maximum kinetic energy. So we see that the maximum kinetic energy with which the electron can be released is HF uh, minus phi so this is this becomes plus phi here so it goes to the right hand side and we know that the maximum kinetic energy electron can have is equal to the uh, stopping potential uh, e times delta vs so uh, stopping potential energy so this is the equation of the photoelectric effect and that explains how uh, the ki maximum kinetic energy is a function of frequency. It's not a function of intensity. So what happens if I change the intensity of light? If I change the intensity of light, the total energy carried by uh, the electromagnetic wave increases because the number of photons increases. If the number of photons increases in the one photon, one electron process, energy absorption process, the number of photoelectrons the electrons ejected by uh, the photon absorption process will increase. So this will increase the current. And what we will see is that the maximum kinetic energy per electron will get unaffected because it's directly proportional to frequency unrelated to intensity. On the other hand, because this is a discrete process, energy absorption process is not continuous, the interaction time, delta T, is very low and it's also independent of the intensity. Now, there is a cutoff frequency for F equals Fc. The maximum kinetic energy is equal to zero joules. Now, you can see here, if this is zero, Hf is equal to... Uh, so, yeah, you can see that... Uh, we have the cutoff frequency equals to E delta Vs plus uh, uh, phi over HF, but E delta Vs is zero, maximum kinetic energy is zero. So the cutoff frequency is uh, actually phi divided by H. So if uh, the photon energy HF is less than HFC, uh, then simply the energy that we're supplying to the electron will not be enough to overcome the work function of the metal and therefore the uh, photoelectron will not be ejected, so there will be no current observed. So this affects uh, this phenomenon here. Uh, below a cutoff frequency, uh, we don't have any uh, current. 
And on the other hand, we have this li linear dependence of ki maximum kinetic energy with frequency uh, from this equation. The cutoff frequency is phi over h. The cutoff wavelength is uh, c over uh, cutoff frequency. So here, this is c over the cutoff frequency, which is uh, phi over h. So we see that the cutoff wavelength is hc over lambda, which can be written as 1240 electron volt nanometers divided by phi in electron volt. So that's a shortcut. If the wavelength of the incident light is greater than the cutoff frequency, the frequency will be less than the cutoff frequency, then we will have no photoelectrons ejected. So that's how Einstein explains this phenomenon. Now this has certain applications. It's a light detector in camera, the photomultiplier tube, CCD camera, etc. So we have a, 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 a current that is generated due to exposure to light. So this becomes a light detector. Let's take a look at an example. A sodium surface is illuminated with light having a wavelength of 300 nanometers. The work function for sodium metal is 2.46 eV. Part A, find the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons. Part B, find the cutoff wavelength for sodium. Now, we know that the maximum kinetic energy, which is equal to the uh, stopping potential E delta Vs, is equal to HF, the absorbed photon energy, minus the work function, uh, uh, plus uh, the potential energy of the electron. So this is basically uh, HC divided by lambda, uh, minus phi, which is 1240 electron volt nanometers divided by the wavelength, which is 300 nanometers minus 2.46 eV. So this gives us a maximum uh, kinetic energy of 1.4. 67 electron volts. All right. And part B, what is the cutoff wavelength? Uh, for cutoff wavelength, we should have the maximum kinetic energy equals to zero so that there will be no current. That's the E times delta Vs is equal to zero. Uh, that means HFC uh, the absorbed photon energy will be equal to the work function of the metal phi. So HC divided by the cutoff frequency lambda, C, cutoff wavelength lambda C will be equal to phi. So we can calculate the cutoff wavelength uh, as HC divided by phi, which is equal to 1240 electron volts uh, nanometers divided by uh, 2.46 electron volts. So this will be 1240 electron volts nanometers divided by 2.46 electron volts and we find the cutoff wavelength of 504 nanometers. All right, so let's summarize what we said. Uh, Einstein explained the observations that we talked about in the photoelectric effect by uh, saying that the electromagnetic wave consists of uh, energy packets called photons, stream of quanta. The quantum of energy is HF uh, and C is equal to lambda times the frequency. So, the, in the photoelectric effect, a photon of incident light gives all of its energy to a single electron in the metal 
it's a discrete process, not a continuous process, and the change in mechanical energy of the electron is equal to the uh, energy provided by electromagnetic radiation, which is the energy of the single photon, HF. Here, the initial kinetic energy of the electron is zero. The photon has a potential energy, minus phi work function of the metal, which is a few electron volts. If we apply an energy of plus phi, the, uh, the electron will be just released, and uh, if, we uh, if we have energy more than that, then it will have a kinetic energy. And if this is the maximum kinetic energy the electron can have, that will be equal to the stopping potential. So let's say that the electron gains its maximum kinetic energy st starting from zero initial kinetic energy, and the electron potential energy will become zero at the surface uh, with the initial potential energy, the, the work function of the metal. So we see that K max plus phi is equal to HF. K max is HF minus phi. So we have to subtract from the photon energy the work function of the metal in order to obtain the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, which is E times delta Vs. Now, how does this explain photoelectric effect? The maximum kinetic energy is a function of frequency, not as a function of intensity. Intensity increase implies an increase in the number of photons and number of photoelectrons, therefore an increase in the current. The interaction process is not continuous. The interaction time is very low. There exists a cutoff frequency below which no current is observed, regardless of the intensity. That cutoff frequency is work function phi divided by h and the maximum kinetic energy scales with the frequency according to this equation and we can also figure out the cutoff wavelength by uh, using c is equal to lambda c times fc and this has certain applications as light detectors photomultiplier tube cct camera etc we have solved a simple example for a sodium surface where the work function is 2.46 ev uh, it's illuminated with light with of wavelength 300 nanometers. Maximum kinetic energy is HF minus phi, which is HC over lambda, our shortcut 1440 AB nanometer divided by 300 minus the work function gives us maximum kinetic energy. As for cutoff wavelength, maximum kinetic energy should be zero, which means HFC is equal to phi, or hc over lambda c is equal to phi so we can find lambda c as hc over phi we find 504 nanometers